welcome to Still Speak Podcast. So last night I brought you a video that was about 40 minutes long about two missing girls who were 14 years old, Izzy and Jade. They had been missing for 10 days. So I thought, okay, well, they're still missing after 10 days. Let me get a video out. Well, to my surprise, I got finished recording. I did some minor edits and added the pictures. I uploaded it and I'm not even exaggerating. Within 30 seconds of it being up on my channel, the girls were found safe. I updated the title. I put a comment in the video and I was going to delete it, but at that point I decided to leave it because I want to keep track of the people that I do videos about and what happened, like what the outcome was. Were they found safe? Were they found deceased? Are they still missing? And it took a while for me to put that together, but I don't care about the time they were found safe and that's all that matters, right? Well, tonight I was battling sort of a headache and I wasn't even going to bring you a video tonight. I was going to come back tomorrow and do my Murdaugh video. But then I saw a story that grabbed my attention and it needs immediate attention to everyone. This is the story of missing Kathleen Moore, who is 34 years old. She's 5'7", about 160 pounds, with black hair and brown eyes. She was last seen on November 29th around 1 a.m. in the Carmel Avenue area of Newport Ritchie, Florida, wearing a long black shirt black jeans, and black shoes. And this is filed with the Pasco Sheriff's Office, and their phone number is 727-847-8102, option 7. Now, while I'm briefly giving you the backstory here, you may hear my cell phone ding at times because I am currently communicating with friends of Kathleen trying to get as much information and um, clarifying of details as I can. So if you hear the ding, that's what it is. Kathleen has had no contact with anyone in days. She didn't go to school. She didn't go to work. She hasn't been on social media. Her phone and purse were found in a dumpster in a uh, area near a Walgreens in Newport Ritchie. And a homeless man is the one who actually found it. And what was said was that he was digging through the dumpster, which the store owner has said that he does, and he found it and turned it into the uh, store owner. Her car is still sitting at her friend's house. So it sounds to me like she was actually out earlier in the evening. And then she left her car at her friend's house, which seems to be something that she would commonly do. And she was supposed to be going to her boyfriend's house, Colin Knapp, K N A. I believe PP, and then come back for her car. Well, she never came back for her car. And the car was still there for days until police took it into custody just to kind of do a search of the car to see if they can find any evidence. And it's been said by friends and her cousin that the word on the street from people they know who are connected to this Colin is that Colin is claiming that she called an Uber and left his home. They don't believe this at all. They believe that if she wanted to leave, she would have called the friend who had her car at her house and asked her to come get her rather than to get an Uber. 
police are trying to see if you know she even called an uber we don't know just yet and the friend said that while she would leave the car there at times it was never longer than overnight there's a tremendous amount of post from friends and family about her being missing if you put her name into facebook and click post there's a ton every single one of them okay she seems to have a lot of friends say this is not like her at all whatsoever okay and they're really concerned very concerned in addition to hearing that Colin is claiming that she called an Uber and left, they also heard that he said that they got into an argument which sparked her to get the Uber and leave. I saw it somewhere, but I need to further confirm this, but I do believe she has a teenage child that she has not been in contact with either, obviously. I did a little digging on Colin, and from what I found, uh, I found a a lawn care business that is active, and it was incorporated on July 2nd of 2021. A friend of Kathleen's uh, told me that they last knew him to work in the restaurant industry, but it appears that he started this lawn care business not long ago, and it's registered to the address that she was last seen at, which was supposed to be with him. So I do believe this is his company. In addition, I did find a record, uh, a criminal record for him. It appears to be the correct date of birth based on Kathleen's posts. But I can't see what the actual charges are because the server is down. So when I click on it on Google, it's telling me the server is not working, which (laughs) it might be due to overload because now this guy's name and face is out there and there's probably a lot of people hopping on the site trying to find out more information about Mr. Knapp. And I've seen that in other cases when... The, all the web sleuths kind of, you know, go to a website at one time to get the information. The server just crashes. I'm hoping it's back up soon and hopefully before the video ends so that I can actually read to you what his past history is. Ugh. I paused to see if it was and no, it's still not up. Urgh. Family and friends obviously don't have very good things to say right now about Colin considering the circumstances and I'm on his Facebook page and of course I can only see what's public right and the last thing that I see he posted was in September of 2020 but that's public Uh, there's no post about her being missing made public like no help us find Kathleen nothing of the sort And there's some rumblings and discussion that he uh, possibly has lawyered up. The friends and family don't know that for a fact. It seems to be something that they were told or a possible rumor that they're trying to see if it's true or not. Going back to the teenage child, I did find a post from a woman who said in her post, this is my daughter's biological mother and she is missing. So I believe maybe her daughter was adopted. Um, not that it really matters to the story, um, given the last time she was seen had nothing to do with the daughter, but I did want to mention that she does have a child and that even the the person who cares for her child now is trying to look for her. This girl has a whole army behind her. I'm not even kidding you. There are a ton, ton of posts. Excuse my voice there for a second. It kind of cut out. And um, they've been trying to get the news to pick it up. I believe they did one or two media outlets. 
I have personally tagged WFLA and JB Buno from WFLA because he's the one who covered the Gabby Petito story because his station covers the Tampa area and Newport Ritchie is considered the Tampa area. So I'm hoping that they'll pick up the story. But sadly, one of the relatives or friends contacted Spectrum Bay News 9 and basically they said that due to the fact the story has limited details and that she's only been missing for a few days, it wasn't enough for them to shine a light on her. I'm a little channel. I have 461 subscribers, okay? I don't even fall in the algorithm on YouTube yet if you search my name. Um, So I can only do so much. I need your help. I need you to share this. I need you to go to my social media accounts where I'm going to put her flyers and pictures. And I need you to share those as well and help this family out. So um, it's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok where I will be posting it under Still Speak Pod. And listen, I know how this sounds, right? It sounds like something happened, nefarious, right? However, that being said, you know, we don't know where she is because her car is at the friend's house. She was supposed to be at the boyfriend's house. Did she really leave it in an Uber? We don't know. Did she get picked up by somebody else and then something happened? Nobody knows, right? So let's not dismiss it and be like, oh, well, this is one of those stories and it's case closed because we don't know. We have no um, details at all yet factually what where she went none i hate to say this but the long care service that i found makes me a little concerned because usually if you have a long care service you have you know a truck trailer and big type of equipment to do all types of yard work and i'm hoping that the police, and I'm sure they are, are going to be looking into those trailers and trucks and not just personal vehicle, but we don't know because it's part of the active investigation and they're not going to share those types of details. We do know they have her car at minimum. She's a beautiful girl and she seems to be very loved And I want to help her family. I feel terribly. I saw the story and I was like, I wasn't even going to do a video. And I was like, I have to. I have to jump on and share her story. Because I can just feel their desperation and their frustration from people not covering it. As I told you, I'm currently trying to get more information from family and friends. At least what they can share or what they know. So, for now, I'm going to end this video, but I may come back tomorrow if I can get more details. I'm really looking for a backstory on the couple, how long they've been together, what type of relationship was it, was it an on-again, off-again, was there any type of abuse, you know, etc., etc. I'm trying to get all the context behind this and see what we could um, possibly dig up that may be helpful in locating her. In the comments, or actually no, the description, I'm going to put a link to her Facebook, to his Facebook, to a group that I joined about her being missing. So you can go and check all that out for yourself. Again, I would say go to Facebook if you have an account on Facebook and type in Kathleen Moore and click post and you're going to see all of the posts by her friends and you're going to get a really good understanding of this being highly unusual for her to just vanish. So help me help them and until next time, I'll see you soon.